Creating an inventory system in your game where there can be hundreds or thousands of item variations can be a bit of a scary task, but I have created a solution which you're seeing in the back here that can get you set up and ready to go in 15 minutes. As always, all the code can be found and pulled from my GitHub repository which will be linked in the description of this video. Opening up a new Unity project, I'm using Unity 2021 on a 2D project, though all of this will be applicable exactly the same for 3D, as well as any version of Unity. First off, in our hierarchy, we will create two objects. First will be the canvas, ensuring that when we do that, an event system gets created. If somehow the event system is missing, you can simply go back to where we found the canvas and add it in the event system below. Next, we'll create an empty game object that we can call manager. This will just be where our main manager scripts can be added to. In our project folder, we can create two subfolders, one for scripts and one for our UI pack. Inside of our UI pack folder, we can drag in any UI elements that we are planning to use. The one I'm using, I found on itch.io, which will be linked in the description of this video. I'm going to quickly separate the sprites up and update all the compression settings to make sure that they are nice and crisp in the scene. Once you have your sprites ready to go, we will create our inventory interface. Back in the scene hierarchy, right click on our canvas, go to UI and select image to create a child image of the canvas. We can call this our inventory background. With the image selected, we can drag in our inventory background sprite into the source image. By default, the image type might be set to simple. Let's change that to sliced and update the pixels per unit multiplier to ensure that it maintains the right aspect ratio. Now, whichever way we stretch this object, the pixels won't distort. If yours doesn't look like this, left click on the source image so that it'll highlight in the projects folder, select it in the project folder, Click Sprite Editor and move the green lines here to match which part of the sprite will stretch. I have set it to the background part here as that's all the same color anyway. Once you've done that, hit Apply and it should update automatically. Right click on the inventory background and create an empty game object. We can call this our content container. Stretch this empty game object out so that it pretty much matches the background of the inventory but doesn't connect to the border. With the container selected, we want to add a grid layout group as a component of the object. Let's leave all these values empty for now, and let's add an image as a child of our container and call it inventory slot. I'm going to replace the default image with an inventory item panel from the UI pack that I've created. With the image added under the grid layout component, we can start to edit the values to match the inventory that we want. The values that we want to change inside of the grid layout group is the child alignment. I like to start it in the middle center. And you can also update the cell size and the spacing if you'd like. I usually do about 20 by 20 for the spacing. To see how this would look as an inventory, you can duplicate the inventory slot items individually and see how that all looks together. After you're happy with how it looks, delete all but one of the inventory slot items. And with the one remaining, select it right click and add an image and a text property to it. We can call the image the icon and we can call the text our item count. You want to resize the icon to fit inside of the inventory slot. And for the text, I like to do what Stardew Valley does and put it in the bottom right corner just outside of the inventory slot. That's all the visual setup we'll do for now. Let's jump into our scripts folder and we'll create four scripts. The four scripts that we'll create are called item, mouse manager, inventory manager, and UI slot handler. The purpose for each script is as follows. Item will just be a scriptable object which handles all the properties that will be associated to any items in your game, such as identification, icons, type, etc. Mouse manager will be used to handle sort of what's being held in the mouse or currently selected objects. Inventory Manager will manage the inventory as a whole, so what types of items belong in which slots, and UI Slot Handler handles the individual item slots and the interactions associated with it. Let's open up our script, and starting with our item script, 
we can remove the start and update functions and remove the mono behavior base class and change this to a scriptable object. Above that, we'll write a way to create instances of these scriptable objects by saying create asset menu, file name will be item, and the menu name will be the scriptable objects slash items. There are a lot of properties that we can add to this class, but for simplicity, I'm only going to create three. A string for our item ID, an integer for our item count, and a sprite for the icon. Outside of this class, but still inside of the script, I have this scriptable object extension that I found online. It's important when using scriptable objects with values that we change during runtime that we don't override the actual scriptable object instance value. So this clone method basically creates a runtime instance of the scriptable object. It's not necessary to know what this part of the code is doing, but make sure you add it in as we will be calling the clone method a few times. Our next script will be the UI slot handler. Let's delete the update function. And next to the mono behavior property, we'll add in the I pointer click handler interface so that we can handle mouse click events. When using interfaces, we need to ensure that all properties of the interface are implemented inside the class. We can fix this error by hovering over it, show potential fixes and select implement interface. When we select that, you can see it creates a new method that belongs to the interface and we can do with that as we need. For now, we'll leave the method empty and add in a few variables to the script. First, we'll create a reference to our item, our icon, and also to the item count text. We'll also create a reference to our inventory manager class. Inside of our start function, we will check if the item is not null, and if it's not, then we want to clone the item and update our icon sprite and our item count text. Otherwise, we can set our item count text to be an empty string and disable our icon sprite game object. That's all for the UI slot handler for now. Let's get started on our inventory manager class. Let's remove the default functions and create three new functions. Stack in the inventory, place in the inventory, and clear item slot. For these functions, we will add a parameter for the UI slot handler and for the place in inventory and stack in inventory, we'll create another parameter for the item. In our place in inventory function, we'll update the properties of the UI slot handler that we've called current slot. The UI slot item will be equal to the item here. The icon sprite will be updated to the items icon. The item count text will be the items amount. And we can also enable the icon game object. Next, in our clear item slot function, we can copy over the contents from our place in the inventory function as we'll just be doing the opposite of what we wrote there. So the UI slot will be null, the icon sprite will be null, the item count text will just be an empty string, and we can disable the current slot icons game object as well. Now let's work on our stack in inventory function. We can say that the active slot items amount will be its value plus the referenced items item amount. And we can show this by actually changing this sign in the middle here to be a plus equal and remove the second current slot item. We also want to ensure that the item count text is being updated correctly as well here. That will be it for the inventory manager class. Let's jump into our mouse manager class and get the final few functions in. As always, let's remove our start and update function and create a few variables. We'll create a static instance of the mouse manager class as well as a reference to the item scriptable object, which will keep track of the currently held object. Next, let's create three functions, awake, update held item, and pick up from stack. Inside of the awake function, we can just set the static instance to this class. In the other two functions, we'll add a parameter for the UI slot handler as well, which we can call current slot. 
In the update held item function, let's start by creating an internal reference to the current slot's item. In this function, we'll be updating our held item while simultaneously updating the inventory by either stacking anything that we're currently holding, clearing what was there, or placing what was there. The first condition will be the stacking. So we check if the held item is not null and the current item is null. And we only want this stack to occur if the items we're comparing have the same ID as well. If all these conditions are met, then we want to get the current slot's inventory manager reference and call the stack in inventory function, passing in the current slot and the mouse manager's held item. We can then say that the held item is null and return out of the function as all of our conditions we met for this function. There are extra conditions that you can do for stacking as well, like how Minecraft only limits 64 of a block, or some items in Stardew Valley don't allow you to stack, but for simplicity, we'll keep it limitless. Next, we'll clear the current slot's item by first checking if the current slot item isn't null. If it's not, then we again use the current slot's inventory manager reference and call the clear item slot function, once again passing in the current slot. Our last condition will be to update the current slot, and again we do that by seeing if we have a held item, and if we do, then we'll use the current slot's inventory and call the place in inventory function, again passing through the current slot and the held item. Finally, at the bottom of this function, we can just say that the held item is equal to the internal current item reference we created at the start of this function. The last function here is basically used if you right click an item. You can individually pick up items from the stack. The first thing we want to do here is check if our held item isn't null, and if so, that the held item's ID and the current slot item's ID match. If they don't, we can return out of this function and not have anything happen. Inside of this function now, we want to check if our held item is null, and if it is, then we want to set it to a clone of the current slot item, and set the item amount to zero by default. Outside of this condition, we will then increase the held item count, decrease the current slot's item count, and update the current slot's item count text. Finally, we do a check if the current slot item is less than zero or equal to zero, and if it is, then we want to clear the item slot completely. All right, we are nearly finished. We just need to jump back into the UI slot handler class and actually make the on pointer click event have something happen. We can remove the default error exception here and check which type of button is being pressed by using the event data parameter. Inside of this condition, we first check if the item attached to this UI slot is null, and if it is, we can return out as we don't want anything to happen here. Otherwise, we can call the mouse manager instance pickup from stack function and pass in this class. After that, we just return out as we don't want to do anything else from here. Finally, outside of this condition and at the bottom of the function, we can just do the default call, which will be the mouse manager instances update held item function, again passing through this object. All right, make sure you save all of the scripts here and we'll jump back into Unity and let it compile. The first thing that I'm gonna do is quickly make a handful of items using the item scriptable object. I'm gonna give them all unique IDs and icons and I will also default the amount to one. Then in the project scene, we'll add the scripts into the necessary components. Inside of our manager object, we add the inventory and the mouse manager scripts. Then inside of our UI slot object under the canvas, we will attach the UI slot handler class and drag in the values of the variables. For our icon, we drag in the empty icon sprite. For the item count, we drag in the text mesh pro component. And for the inventory manager, we can just drag in the manager class and Unity will automatically recognize the inventory manager attached to it. We'll leave the item blank for now as we want some of the slots to have blank items and we can duplicate the UI slot until it fits the inventory. 
Now I'm just going to pick some random inventory slot items here and drag in the scriptable objects to them. After that, we can hit play and interact with our inventory immediately. Now, if we left click on some of the components, you will notice it disappears and that kind of just means it's going into your mouse. So if you click on the manager class as well, you can see that the currently held item is our chest. And if you just drop it onto any of the empty ones, it will disappear as well. Now we've got five of these potions here as well. And if you right click on them, it's going to stack them and you can actually place them in other positions as well. And they're not gonna stack with other objects. You can see you can still left click and sort of replace them and you can stack them on top of objects that have the same ID as well. Now there's a lot more functionality that you can do for this. For example, organization or automatic stacking or not allow stacking. And I have some solutions for those if you're interested, but I hope this is a solid starting point for you guys to build off of. If there's any issues with the code or extra functionality that you're not sure how to approach, leave a comment down below or join me in my Discord group and message there. I'd love to be able to help however I can. If there's more to this tutorial that you want to see as well, then definitely let me know. And if there's enough responses, then I'll definitely work on a second part as well. I hope you guys found this useful. And if so, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.